Hello everyone and welcome to another story time brought to you by me, Miss Sasha. I am the executive and founder and director of ABC Read, which is a nonprofit organization. I'm also a reading tutor for pre-K through fourth grade students, all right? So there you have it, and I'm just going to get right on into it, y'all, because this is about this book. I ain't about to make it all about me, okay? I'm about to read chapter two of this book, J.D. and the Family Business, written by J. Dillard, illustrated by Akeem S. Roberts, all right? Now, I'm going to tell you this. If you have not read J.D. and the Great Barber Battle, you need to go ahead and pick that up now and go and, of course, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Reading is Freedom. And subscribe to the ABC Read channel as well. Don't have as many uh, videos up on there because I've been focusing on reading as freedom. But I'm building up there. However, I've read the whole book of J.D. and the Great Barber Battle. And that gives you the backdrop, the background information that you need to know about this family, J.D.'s family, and how he became this successful eight-year-old barber in Meridian, Mississippi. Okay, and all of the trials and tribulations he had to go through in order to become that awesome dope barber. All right. Now with this book, this is almost like a, a part two, if you will. So in chapter one, they had went to his mom's graduation. She was getting another college degree. Shout out to her. And at the graduation, his sister has slipped him a note saying that, uh, an idea that she had for the summer so they could, they can have like an awesome summer. They didn't want to just do a lot of school work and a lot of, you know, things so they can be caught up when school starts again. All right. She said, you know what? I got something else planned for us. Okay. So, um, now we're about to dig into chapter two, cause we're about to find out what that plan is. All right. So this is a double surprise. When the graduation ended, we told mom we were going to the new Meridian Buffet, a restaurant that had become our favorite place to eat at when we took a day off from cooking. As we drove past our house, grandma said, I forgot my wallet, Slayton. Pull inside and I'll come right back out. But when we pulled into the driveway, everyone who had been hiding in the backyard jumped out and yelled, surprise! My best friend, Jordan, and my other friends, Xavier and Eddie were there. Vanessa had invited a bunch of friends too, including Jessica, who was friends with both of us. Jessica was in my grade and on my Pee Wee football team. She sometimes joined our lunch table when there was a new issue out of our favorite comic or when she wanted to show us a cool new YouTube video. Mom was definitely surprised and speechless. We sat around and talked, ate and danced to the playlist coming from Jordan's Beats Peel. Vanessa walked over to me with Jessica and asked, are you ready to hear my idea, J.D.? I guess, I said. I wanted to hear the deal before it expired, like Vanessa's note said it would. Jessica smirked and pulled out her iPhone. She went to YouTube and typed in the words, Child Barber. I leaned in, and we all watched as Jessica scrolled through videos of kids with clippers in their hands, cutting grown people's hair. Some of the barbers were girls, some were boys. And some were in other countries, but they were all around my age. I had looked at barber videos before to try to learn new styles, but never ones done by other kids. Hmm, all this kid is doing is a drop fade. I do those every week at Heart and Sun, and I even do teardrop ones now, I told her. That's not that special. Jessica continued to scroll. Why are you showing me this? I asked them. This is what's going to help us save our summer, Vanessa said. I gave her a confused look. What does she mean? JD, you just can't get it through your head, Jessica said with a laugh. Let's start a YouTube channel, they exclaimed at the same time. Then Vanessa picked it up. If we put a girl's nail and hair salon together with boy haircuts, everyone will watch and we will get way more views than these other kids. The confused look on my face didn't change, so she continued. We can become famous and not just in Meridian, she said. This kid has over 8 million views. There, there aren't even 3 million people in the entire state of Mississippi. We always have facts and figures about our state memorized, thanks to Evans Summer School. Come on, J.D., Vanessa said. 
I can tell you're bored with heart and son. It never seemed like Vanessa paid attention to me or what was happening in my life. But maybe I was wrong. Okay, Vanessa, but who was going to film us? We don't know how to add music and edit videos like this, I said. We don't even have our own phones because we're not allowed. Vanessa turned to Jessica, who finally put her phone away. I know how to do it, Jessica said. I already started a channel for my track races. Jessica had shown me her channel before and her videos did look like little movies. It was another thing she was good at. She would probably be president someday. Working to together could be fun, I said. What else are you doing this summer? Last year, Jessica came back to school having learned Taekwondo. She showed me a perfect roundhouse kick while I had on my football pads so it wouldn't hurt, even though it still kind of did. It was amazing. Wow, Jessica, cool karate kick, I had told her. It's Taekwondo, she corrected me. Karate is from Japan and is more about your hands. Taekwondo is from Korea and focuses more on kicks. How did you know that, I asked. It's called Google, she laughed. Before Jessica could tell us about her plans for summer this year, Grandma yelled out, May I have everyone's attention, please? She was standing on the steps of the back porch looking out at us. Jordan, please turn down that music, she said to my best friend. Jordan shut off the music completely, and that's when I noticed how many people were in my backyard. There were folks from church, the rec center where my grandmother taught ceramics classes, mom's friends from school, and my friend's parents. Grandma was always the life of the party, so it wasn't a surprise to see her get up to say a few words. Veronica, I am so proud of you. You went back to school and stuck with it. I love you. Your daddy loves you. And we all love you. Slayton, do you have any words to add? No, honey. I think you summed it up, he said as he put his arm around Grandma. There were claps and awes from the crowd. But people must have thought that Grandma's speech meant gift time because a line formed by the back table where boxes of different sizes piled up in an empty bowl filled up with envelopes. I wondered if mom would let us open the boxes with her like we did on Christmas Day. Vanessa took Je Jessica's hand and started leading her to the food. Think about it, JD, she said. I walked over to Xavier and Eddie, my friends from Pee Wee Football, who had been sitting with Jordan and talking about a video game called Minecraft the whole time. Jordan had just gotten into it. Can I see your phone for a second, Jordan? I asked. Jordan handed over his phone. I typed in the words child barber, just like Jessica had done a few minutes ago. Look at these kids, I said. They're famous for doing the same thing I do. You're famous, Xavier replied. Everybody saw you beat Henry Jr. at the barber battle, and he's a grown adult. Yeah, Eddie said. You're the man here in Meridian. I think Eddie meant that as a compliment but it didn't feel that way, and I wasn't sure why. I only had to beat one person in Meridian, I reminded them, and nobody outside of this city knows what I do. If I told them about how the perks of the barber battle were fading away and how it felt like people were forgetting about me, would they understand? I wish we were at the barber shop. It felt easier to talk there. I decided I would tell my friends anyway. Vanessa said if we made their hair videos together, pe more people could see the work we do. I said it in one breath. Jordan looked at Xavier. Xavier looked at Eddie. Eddie looked back at Jordan. Were they ever going to say something? You want to be cooped up with your sister all summer doing hair? Xavier asked. It wasn't what I wanted to hear, but I was glad someone had started talking. Why not? I replied. Jessica knows how to film videos. Xavier groaned. During Pee Wee football last season, he was a little jealous of the attention Jessica got on the team because of how good she was. By the end of the season, though, it seemed like they had made up and even started practicing together. There's no kid in town working and making money like you, J.D., Jordan added. Jordan had a point. 
I could buy anything I wanted right now, like video games. I like that. But something still wasn't right. I didn't feel like the best at anything anymore. Plus, Jordan didn't know how boring it could be at Heart and Sun on Saturdays and how tired I felt at the end of my shift. I had some money saved up, and it's not like I hadn't lived without money before. Maybe the summer was the right time to try something new and spend more time with my friends. A few hours later, when the sun started to go down and everybody went home, I retreated to my bedroom. I had lucked out because my sister shared a room with mom and my brother Justin preferred my grandparents' room. I usually fell asleep pretty fast, but tonight my mind was racing. I knew that I wanted to join Vanessa and that I wanted a break from heart and son. But how was Henry Jr. going to take it? When he threatened to shut down my bedroom barbershop last year, I imagined pouring blue Gatorade into the canisters he used to sanitize his hair tools. If I told him I wanted to quit, would he use his neck strips to tie me to his chair so I couldn't leave? Since I wasn't going to fall asleep anytime soon, I brought out my art pencils and a pad of paper. Drawing was something I did when I was excited, nervous, happy, sad, or angry. Tonight, I decided to think of what my YouTube name could be. I'd need something catchy so people would know what I do. Scissor Man. <sighs> Barber Boy, nah. JD the Amazing Barber Boy, nah, JD the Kid Barber, check, that was it. Maybe it was time for the rest of the world outside of Meridian to find out about JD the Kid Barber. Oh, uh, let's grow, y'all. Oh my goodness, that was an awesome chapter, a little lengthy but definitely awesome, all right? I love it, and y'all know how I am, okay? Those of you all who have been following me, y'all know I love to see my young black kids involved in entrepreneurship, all right? Meaning having your own business, okay? So what do you all think about that? Do you all think that JD should go ahead and uh, collab with Vanessa and Jessica? They're doing their hair and the nails, and then he's cutting the hair? Because you know, as they say, you can, uh, what is, it's an African proverb. You can go fast alone, uh, but you can go farther if you go together. I know I done jacked it up somewhat. Please Google that, look that up though. But it's true. When you're working with other people and you're collaborating, you're having partnerships, that's actually when you see yourself grow at a great pace, all right? And then everybody is winning, all right? So uh, you all think about that. What would you all do? in this situation. So I hope you all enjoy chapter two again of this great book, JD and the Family Business, written by Jay Dillard, illustrated by Akeem S. Roberts. I am Miss Sasha. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and share. Okay, and make sure you also read for at least 30 minutes a day, y'all. Peace.